Hello folks, I hope you're all doing very well. This is all about the Quest 3 and how it's maturing, especially for flight simulation. Now we all know that in terms of VR gaming, there is no better headset. At the moment, I'm really enjoying Asgard's Wrath and Assassin's Creed. I think it's absolutely incredible what is, you know, possible on a modern mobile processor. But getting into flight simulation, things are a little bit more tricky because of course, not having a DisplayPort connection means you have to dial in your settings really well. I'm gonna go through some of them today, but I do have a full Quest 3 settings guide, which I'll also link in the notes below. So first of all, a quick shout out to VR Wave as always, because they do produce excellent lens inserts for a full range of VR headsets. Now, even if you don't wear glasses, I still think it's important to pick a pair of Plano lens inserts because they will help protect those very, very expensive lenses. But if you do, of course, wear glasses, then it's much more comfortable. They can help combat motion sickness with blue light filters. There'll be a 5% discount code in the description below. Please do check it out. So the Quest 3. What an amazing headset. And you know what? I've been using it quite a lot recently to get to know it more. And I will continue to do that through this year because I really do feel that Meta has made a absolutely fantastic VR headset. And even I'm glad to say with lower spec computers, those, I say lower spec, you know, a 3070 Ti is still a great card. You can get some pretty decent results because I've been using this at my friend's house recently just to see how the Quest 3 behaves. And I must admit, I was quite surprised with how well it's performing. I'm just gonna show you my settings now, including those in the sim. As you can see, you might be surprised to know that this is my 4090 13900K uh, system. And yeah, the graphic settings are quite low. I could definitely run it on ultra, but I really wouldn't recommend that because I want to have plenty of headroom. And this is the first thing that I need to sort of advise people. It sounds crazy, but just lower those settings down a lot more than you'd like to, because once you've got them set and you've got great frame rate, you won't even think about it. Now, for those of you who do have a beefy GPU, then you can actually override the resolution in the OpenXR toolkit, as you can see here. This for me makes a huge difference. And I've actually gone as far as 4142 by 4142 which you know does take the frame rate down a little bit, but I'm still able to get 40 frames per second most places. And it is extremely sharp at that point, very impressive. So have a play around with that and get a sweet spot for your system. You could even do this say with the 3070 Ti as well, but just be careful. That's all I can say. <laughs> now for the 3070 Ti system, I would recommend these settings. Again, I know they're quite low, but with DRSS, actually with a bit of FSR sharpening in the OpenXR toolkit, or you could use CAS as well. That actually really makes it very sharp, although there's no doubt about it, it's not as good as TAA. It will give you some really nice frames back. And actually recently with DirectX 12, it's running really well these days and you'll get better performance when using DLSS. For those of you who prefer using a link cable, and I totally understand that, especially if your network isn't up to scratch, because mine isn't very good to be honest, um, then these are the settings I run. I know the bit rate is extremely high, but I find that works really well at around 800. Now, to put that into the Oculus Debug tool, you'll need to paste it into a notepad first. I also like to use link sharpening. That's all I change, apart from perhaps um, asynchronous time warp, sorry, asynchronous space warp. You know, that's another contentious one. I really like ASW. Um, I just think it really works well. But if you don't like using it, you know, just disable it, that's fine. But just bear in mind that you will get more micro stuttering when turning close to the ground if you're not reaching a decent frame rate. I also would recommend halving the frame rate, uh, again, using the OpenXR toolkit. So say if you're running at 80 hertz, which I personally would recommend with the Quest 3, that means you'll be getting 40 frames per second. And even with that motion reprojection, that does feel really smooth. I don't really see the point in going any higher than 80 hertz because I can't really tell the difference between 80 hertz and 90 hertz. And you're just giving your computer 10 frames per second more to render. 
Now, for those who like a virtual desktop, and I am a fan of it, um, it's what I use most of the time. It's simply because it's very convenient. The Quest 3 has brilliant wireless capability, so why not use it? I do actually prefer it because you get better contrast with the increased color vibrancy option, as well as the Snapdragon game super resolution, which again, just increases that detail. My bit rate here, as you can see, is 120 megs per second, and my sharpening is 75%. But again, please do just mess around with these sort of settings. I wouldn't really recommend godlike mode unless you've got a 30, 80 and upwards. But again, just play around and see where you can go with it. In each case, I'd recommend doing your tests at New York or perhaps uh, London City because they're known for being PC breaker zones. If you can get a decent frame rate there, you'll be fine anywhere in the MSFS world. Just one more note about super sampling, especially for those who have lower GPUs. Um, I always tend to do my super sampling with the OpenXR toolkit. And as you can see here, keep everything at their default values in the Oculus app. However, I am aware that soon, well, as of now, the OpenXR toolkit is not being supported anymore. And because of that reason, I may have to completely redo all these settings again. I'm keeping an eye on things, but so far at the moment, it is still working really, really well. I hope that video has been of some help to you. Um, I will also link my full VR settings guide for the Quest 3 down below. But I thought it was just worth going through some of the major points again. But let me just close off by saying that I'm absolutely loving the Quest 3 in MSFS and DCS world. And you may be even surprised to know that when I'm doing VFR tours, when I'm looking at the ground and, you know, scenery and not so much about pure clarity, I often choose the Quest 3 over any other VR headset at this point especially because of those pancake lenses are so gorgeous and when I've been using it recently when I went back to the Pimax Crystal it did take me a few minutes to adjust to the aspheric lenses again which may actually be the reason why some people are struggling more than others because they are both very different types of lens designs. So you know even though we're losing the Riva G2 I actually feel that the Quest 3 has a great future ahead of it as a flight simming headset. What do you think? Anyway, that's it from me today. If you've got this far in the video, thank you so much. Please feel free to subscribe because 80% of people who watch my content regular are not actually subscribed. Just hit that subscribe button now. It really would help me out. Take care. See you soon, folks. Bye-bye for now.